Hey guys, RC here. We are back for another RC Reacts. This one for today's Leeds United Arsenal matchup. It's been two weeks uh, coming back from the international break, of course, coming off of back-to-back 4-1 -back defeats uh, the last week that we played. And today was today was not good. I mean, we played very well. I think we were by far the better team. And you can see Nicholas Pepe was sent off in the 51st minute. Hey, you know, some hijinks between him and Johnny Alioski with but uh, Pepe with a with an obvious headbutt. I mean, as the announcer said, he had nobody to blame but himself. And I apologize, I'm wearing a green shirt today, so uh, if the sparklies are throwing you off, it's just the uh, green shirt blending with the uh, green screen, and I just figured that was, you know, we'd just leave it. Um, but we, we should have won this game if we take a look. 85% pass accuracy, 67% possession, and 300, 299 more passes, 25 shots, only four on target. So we had a lot of cracks at the goal. Out of those four, three hit the woodwork in the second half. And any one of those four, Patrick Bamford's header was probably the closest we had to one going in. Rodrigo had a nice crack at the top corner that went off right off the joint from the crossbar in the up post. And uh, I think Rafinha had had one go off the outside of the post from the left side of the box. Uh, he had a couple of long shots. Rafinha was probably the news of the day, of course, getting into the starting lineup. Uh, Rodrigo coming back uh, from his positive COVID test before the international break, and he got in off the bench in the second half. Uh, didn't get a chance to see Eddie and Kedia, and that might have been a good thing. Uh, of course, Eddie was on loan the first half of last season with Leeds down in the championship. And, uh, you know, I think he, you know, a lot of Leeds fans really liked him and appreciated him for what he could do. He just couldn't unseat Bamford last year. And uh, Bamford's start to this season has shown that that was well-founded, I guess. But uh, all in all, we got a point. That's the good news. We let three points slip away because, you know, we we dominated this game and then we were a man up for 40 minutes, you know, most of the second half. So very disappointing there. Pretty sloppy game. They, uh, they did have some rain come down right before the match uh, kicked off. Uh, if we were, I was watching it on uh, NBCSN uh, here in the States. And uh, the pregame when they were coming out, you could see the rain coming down when uh, when Cooper walked out on the pitch. By the way, if you didn't see it, uh, and and this holds a special place for me because you guys may, if you're if you've only watched the leads uh, or the reaction videos here for Leeds United, uh, you may not be aware. My youngest son uh, was diagnosed with cancer in 2017 and went through. Uh, cancer treatment and chemotherapy, and um, and luckily he is in remission right now. Uh, he has been clean since you know since uh, coming out you know finishing his chemo treatments in 2018. So uh, knock on wood, and I will for that. But uh, at the beginning of the match, uh, Coops, the captain, was holding an iPad uh, tablet. And uh, they had a young man that was their honorary uh, mascot today as part of his uh, Make-A-Wish. And Make-A-Wish is an international organization that grants wishes to uh, kids with uh, potentially terminal diseases, uh, even if they recover. Uh, so my son actually got a Make-A-Wish as well. Um, but uh, that hits real close to home, so I was really happy to see that off topic. Uh, if we take a look, Leeds moves up a spot to 14th. Still three losses in their last five, but, you know, at least we break that. Looked a lot better defensively. You know, again, against a mid-table arsenal, and they had lost three of their last five as well. But we should have won this game. We, we should have pulled the two points. 
but it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, with the rain coming down early, play was real sloppy in the first half, I felt, uh, especially for leads. A lot of sliding on the field. The announcer called the uh, the pitch greasy, <laughs> that there, there was a greasy pitch. I've never heard it termed that before. Uh, I don't know if that's an English thing or not, but uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. But, you know, we played well. We had some good one-two passing, but just our passing broke down and got sloppy, and we gave away a lot of balls on the attack. The good news is we were able to recover. Alioski was really active today. I think he played a big role uh, in solidifying our defense, and uh, when a and it was weird, Ailing came off instead of Alioski uh, for the last sub, and I thought that was kind of interesting. Dallas then moved back from midfield, allowing Rodrigo to come into the central mid and be more of an attacking force up there, and I think that worked. But man, we just had a lot of shots where they just didn't get their, you know. Uh, to quote the announcer, they didn't get their knee over the ball, and the balls sailed high over the goal uh, or wide of the mark. I can think of uh, Click had two uh, that I can think of right offhand. Uh, Rafinha had a couple as well, plus the one off the woodwork. Rodrigo had one that went wide, and I think one that went over as well. Bamford played a good game today. I mean, he wasn't you know stellar by any chance, but... He had, a, he had a couple of opportunities. All of his shots were on target. Uh, he had the, the the nice header that went, you know, had some pace on it, went down to the corner, and would have been in the net, forced to save. And uh, so, yeah, I think Bamford played well. He was in the right place, creating some chances. And uh, what do you guys think about Jan Paveda? He's got, he's got a lot of pace to him. He showed some decent he showed some really solid first touch right up there with Jack Harrison but I don't know it's you know, kind of like Harrison I feel he plays with the ball too much on the edge of the box and then he's so small it's a you're able to knock him off the ball real easy but uh, I did see a couple of uh, crosses in by Paveda and Harrison both that you know they they made earlier crosses rather than taking them deep into the corner and making a cross from the touchline. So some things there that I saw that were a little different from games past. And, you know, at the end of the day, we uh, we got a point, and we just have to keep adding to that tally. So if we take a look here at the standings, uh, Burnley still with a couple of games in hand. They play, I think they play tomorrow of course, I'm recording this on Sunday. I think they play on Monday. But, you know, even if they go up, let's say Fulham's in the relegation at that point. So we're seven up, which is three matches. So, you know, a three-match cushion at this point between relegation and 14th. Nothing wrong with that. I think that bodes very well for us to stay up this year relatively comfortably. And I did see a post uh, on Twitter, one of the leads uh, links that I uh, subscribe to on Twitter, and some speculation that with the start to the season, that and we're a quarter way in already, so we're on pace for 42 points, or 44 points, I believe. But, you know, that 40 point seems to be the magic threshold to avoid relegation, but there are some whispers that it could be a lower number this year just due to how abysmal the bottom of the table is performing. Um, I think Sheffield and West Brom are, you know, probably shoe-ins to go down the way they're playing. Long season, they could always turn it around. And I think Fulham's in that group too. So Brighton puts a, a you know win uh, yesterday, jumps them up the table a little bit. Build some room there, five points uh, between 16th and 17th. So, and at the top of the table, Tottenham on a four game win streak, four on the bounce for them. They're on uh, 20 points and hold a one point advantage on Leicester. 
and Chelsea two back. Liverpool, and you know, coming off a draw. Southampton kind of surprising. Aston Villa three losses in five. How how they have fallen uh, after winning their first three or four. West Ham, I think, is a little surprising this year. So that's interesting. But anyway, we're going we're to make it real quick because I've got some American football I need to go watch. I'm doing this during halftime of uh, the New Orleans Saints game against the Atlanta Falcons. But uh, all in all, outside of the sloppiness, which I attribute to the weather, very well played game. We looked pretty solid against Arsenal, who are a top six club, just not top six in the standings this year. And uh, at least we didn't let it get away from us in the second half uh, like we did in the FA Cup last year while we were down in the championship. So look forward to what's going to come next. If we take a look at the fixture list, we have Everton coming up on Saturday and then Chelsea and West Ham after that. So this is going to be a tough stretch of games. So pulling a point from Arsenal, uh, Everton. Everton's going to be tough, but I think we could get points there, uh, you know, with some breaks. Chelsea, I would love to beat Lampard, but I think that's probably going to go against us. And then West Ham, uh, they're coming into some form, but that's going to be one we'll have to take some points from as well. I would like, assuming that we're going to lose to Chelsea, uh, I would like to get some points from Everton and West Ham. Uh, four points, well, that, that would be asking a lot. If we could at least get three. No, because I'd like a win and a draw out of those two games. If we could draw with Everton, beat West Ham, and then take the loss to Chelsea, that would give us four more points in three matches, and that would put us up on 15. So, you know, no telling what's going to shake out in there. But all these clubs are ahead of us, so we need to pull points if we want to gain ground on that mid-table where we would like to foreseeably finish. All right, guys, we'll have a good one. Uh, hope to talk to you next week. Thanks for checking out the video. Again, sorry I wore a green shirt. I wasn't even thinking when I got dressed this morning. But uh, we'll talk to you next week. Have a good one. Bye.